Hi class, this is Dennis. I wrote this short little program. This program simply has three variables. Uh, one for my index of my loop, for my loop control, but then I have an integer variable and a character variable. What I want to show is what happens when you enter, when you scan in ints and chars in the same program. So what I did here in this loop, in this loop, is I ask for a character, then I ask for an integer. So character, integer, I displayed the character and the integer, and I did this five times. I did this five times. Uh, so I just want to run this program and show you what happens. So when I run it, the very first thing it does is what I would expect. It says enter a character. So I'm going to enter X. Then it says enter an integer, and I'm going to enter 6. Now watch, this is where the error occurs. It says you entered X and 6 like I would expect, but now if it, where it says enter a character, notice it's not letting me enter a character, it's letting me enter an integer, and now it says you entered 6, and it doesn't tell me about the character anymore because something's wrong. It's letting me enter an integer again. You entered nothing and 7. And it keeps letting me enter the integer until I do it five times, skipping over the character. Now that's a problem. And that is a problem explicitly with C. Other languages don't have this issue. C is a very low level language which lets me control how things are stored in memory and even lets me do something called a type ahead. Uh, so in C, there is something called a keyboard memory or keyboard buffer. So this is a part of the RAM, and as I type, uh, information goes into this buffer, and then it's echoed to the screen. Now let me show you what happens. When I enter a character, I enter the letter, followed by I press Enter. Well, what that does is the scanf consumes the letter, but in this keyboard buffer, the enter sim symbol is still in there. Now, when I scan an in in integer, that same thing happens, but an integer just ignores that uh, keyboard buffer enter uh, character. But it, the same thing does happen with an integer. So I read in an integer, and then I have to press enter. So the integer gets stored here, but the enter is still stored in this memory. The first time it lets me do it, but after I loop back up to enter this character, what happens is because in the keyboard memory there is the enter key, it scans that from the, key, from the keyboard memory instead of allowing me to type, and the end result is what you saw when I ran this program. Now I'm going to show you a fix. Now I'm going to show you a fix. So back up the top of your program, I want you to do this. Pound define uh, my flush and I want that to be uh, flush like that. So my flush flush. In all reality, I really don't want this to be my flush like this. I want this to be my flush like that. So it's all capital letters. So now, this word, my flush, is an alias for this little piece of code which is called a function. I know we haven't covered functions yet, but I want you to write this on top, right where I'm writing it, between your includes and between main. You need to write this one statement. You need to write flush and then a beginning and ending and you're going to say wow get, get char not equal, and I'll explain this in a minute, not equal, not equal, that, not equal that. So what this does is this creates a little loop, and this is getting characters from that keyboard buffer memory area one at a time. It's going to get them, and it's going to consume them, any extra spaces, until it sees the enter key. Once it sees the enter key, it consumes it and stops. That will stop that extra character 
going into the get char value. Now, I need to use this in my code. And to use it, after every scan, I need to type my flush with a semicolon. My flush with a semicolon. And I notice, notice I do it on the same line because, in essence, if I'm mixing data types from characters uh, and integers, that's when this occurs. So I like, I wish C didn't have this problem, but this enables me to put it on the same line because it's two commands, but it just fits. Anytime I do a scan, I do a my flush. Let's see if that solved the problem. Let's see if that solved the problem. So here I am back inside of the program, and I'm going to enter a character. I'm going to enter X again since I did last time, and 5. No problem. You entered X and 5. Notice, though, it says enter a character. So this time it's allowing me to enter something like a D, and I can enter an 8. You enter D and 8. And it's going to let me do this 5 times. So I am consuming that enter key, and notice characters can be, uh, uh, oh, I didn't do that. Notice, here, I'll do it here. Characters can be letters. So characters are anything on the keyboard. I'll do it one more time, and that's it. Program over. While I'm in here, I want to show you one last thing. How long have I done? Six minutes. I'll show you this. You can also, with this pound define, you can define aliases for anything. And if I want to pause the screen, and I do this a lot in my code, I would maybe like to create an alias for pause. So in my program, when I pause a lot of times, I don't type this. I just type P-A-U-S-E. And this is an alias for this. Not a big deal. I'm lazy, and we like shortcuts. This is a shortcut. So anytime I want to put a pause in this program, P-A-U-S-E, and it pauses each time it sees it. Okay, that's it for now. Let me know if you have any problems or questions.